So I have decided that I'm just going to keep the style of pants that I wear now because I figure that that way once every 20 to 30 years I'll be in style, right? Because they always sort of come and go short, long, bell, flare, tight, right? So if I just keep constant, I know within the span of my lifetime, twice or three times, I'll, I'll be in, in style. And, and what affirmed the fact that things kind of always come back kind of a, a generation later is that I, I noticed that some of the youth are wearing a bracelet, and on the bracelet it has four letters, and those letters are WWJD. And this stands for, what would Jesus do? And I kind of smiled because I hadn't seen those braces since I was in high school, but apparently they're coming back. And, and part of the what would Jesus do was, was sort of this hope by parents and, and youth workers and, and pastors that youth who are prone to kind of say yes to anything and everything might sort of pause for a moment and think through, hold on, what would, what would Jesus do? And, and resist temptation a bit more. But, but I'm wondering if I could play with this uh, WWJD and actually think about our youth in really a positive way and, and the way in which youth are willing to take risks and to try things and to make it WWJD, what would Jesus dare? Okay? What would Jesus dare to do? Because I, I think that a lot of faith is really about living in an uncertain world with courage, not knowing how everything is going to play itself out, but still having to move forward and make decisions. So this week, I was uh, with a family, and the, the father, the grandfather, the husband has entered into the end of life. And that's a really tricky time for families. I'm sure you've all been there where the doctor says, or the hospice nurse says, this is where we think things are, and the family kind of has to make some really hard decisions then about what to do and make phone calls, and people have to decide if and when and who is going to visit. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty, and so we sort of have to take our best take a risk, kind of almost a gamble, trusting and hoping in faith that things will turn out amid the uncertainty that we face. Again, I think a lot of faith isn't simply about purity or avoiding the wrong things, although, again, we do pray, uh, keep us from temptation and deliver us from evil. I think a lot of faith is living with the courage to, in the face of uncertainty, to prayerfully discern this is where we have to go, knowing that it could not turn out the way we want it to. In today's parable from Matthew 25, it's about these three people who are given a talent, this ancient unit of money. And while the two of them, what they decide to do is they go to the market and they begin to trade. And the thing about trading in the market is you could lose money. You got to take a risk. To make money, you got to spend money. Right? There's a risk involved. They, they take a risk with the gifts, the time, the talents, the treasure, the blessings that God has given them. But the one servant takes the gift that he has, the treasure, the talent, digs a hole, and buries it. And in so doing, makes a greater mistake in that this person wasn't willing to take a risk. They weren't willing to take a risk for the sake of the gospel, to take a risk with the gifts that God had given them to live in courage and in faith. So today, we have these thank offering boxes. And for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with what's going on, Deacon Emily alluded to them. And this fall, we've invited people to connect faith and finances to, to pray, and when they pray, to sort of add some coins uh, to this prayer box as a way of connecting our faith and our fellowship and our finances. And this comes from really a tradition two centuries ago. Two centuries ago, almost at any church, women were not allowed to be pastors. But furthermore, in most churches, two centuries ago in the mid-1800s, women were not allowed to serve on councils or to be in leadership positions. Well, uh, again, WWJD, what would Jesus dare? And so these women, though, they had a passion. They, they really felt like God had put it on their heart to share the gospel and to, to do good things in this world. But, you know, those men at the church, they weren't going to let those women have money now and decide what to do with money. So the women had to figure out a way to get money to support the missions. 
And so they came up with this thank offering box and they intentionally made it about coins because they wanted the rich and the poor, the people domestically and the people overseas to be able to contribute on a daily basis. And so they began then to collect their funds out of which grew so many mission endeavors all over the world. Again, part of our life as a disciple isn't simply avoiding the wrong thing, but it's about living in faith, taking a risk, stepping out in courage where God is calling us to share our time, our treasure, and our talents. Well, this isn't something that happened years ago. It turns out that this is still happening today. And last Sunday was a beautiful Sunday at our church. It was All Saints Day. It was just really, really magnificent. And I was feeling very good. And then I went on Sunday night to uh, the pod uh, two at Rock Lidditz, and I got to see our Empty Bowls event. And it was fantastic. And there were, it's just this really well-run machine. And there were pottery bowls made by local artists. And there were restaurants serving soup. And there were uh, people of all ages, a lot of youth helping out. And it was really, it just looked like so smooth as if this always should have been happening. But we all know, right, when anything looks that smooth, you know, there's a lot of work that goes on behind it. But it, it really grew out of, of six years ago or so. Our youth director came to me and said, hey, I've been to this Empty Bowls in Lancaster. I'd like to try this in Lidditz. Could we do this here? Could we do it out of the church? And I said, sure, let's take a risk. And in the process then, they had to recruit all these artists, all these businesses, figure out where to have it, the whole thing. Well, now, for the last couple of years, this has been raising well over $10,000 a year for the food bank. Again, we are called as Christians not simply to avoid the wrong things, yes, indeed, but also to take risks, to step out and to use our time and our treasure and our talent for the sake of other people and where God has called us to. Okay. Well, this all sounds really good, right? Okay, use my gifts and skills, but we all know that that can be hard. That can be scary, especially to give of ourselves to other people and even to give people money. This is really hard for a lot of us. It's really uncomfortable. And I think one of the things that holds us back from really living generously with our time, our treasure, and our talent is the fear that then we're not going to have enough. And I want to say there's another great sermon there about give us this day our daily bread. So I know, I just want to acknowledge that that is a fear that holds us back from being generous. But there's another fear that in this passage holds the one back from being generous. And that is that the one who buries it is afraid that he's going to make a mistake. He's afraid he's not going to correctly use the gifts that God has given this person, right? So the person is scared they're going to mess up with this one holy precious life with all the gifts they have. And so they just choose to bury what they have. And I've got to say, I know that fear. I know that fear in part because I'm one of the leaders at this congregation. And this Sunday in the last month, people have been giving their pledges in. And every week, you all faithfully give to this church. And then I feel a tremendous sense of responsibility along with the other leaders to be good stewards of what you have given. Right? I feel like you all are entrusting me and the other leaders at this church to spend wisely that which we all give. And I feel that burden. I want to do right by you. And so again, I, I live with this, and I don't want to make a mistake. But, but along the way, there's, there's some things that the Lord has, has shown me. Well, uh, two years ago, there, was, uh, there is a school in uh, one of our partner areas in Tanzania. And it turns out that at that school, due to some really unusual circumstances, the teachers weren't getting paid. And in Tanzania, it's not totally uncommon to not get paid, but they were really not getting money. And so, again, you're all a generous bunch, and so I was able to send some funds over. And I sent them over to a teacher. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I'd given the person the gift, and I, and I hoped and trusted that they would use it wisely. But what they did then really humbled me. They came back a few days later, and I had sent them uh, 500, two sort of separate times, and they took that $500 that I gave and they split it up 
among over 30 teachers, something like $12.75 per teacher. And they had each teacher sign off that they had received $12.57. And I was so humbled that this person was that accountable with the money. But I also thought in my stomach, like, wow, they're having to sign off on $12.57. Right? Like, wow. So I was starting to, so, okay, I felt, though, like, okay, we had helped out. And, again, we have a partnership with this school. And and so, again, I kind of moved on. But what the the Lord has has shown me over time is that uh, ultimately that uh, when you have handed it over to the church, that actually it's not your money, but it's God's money anyway. Again, the money that we all give, it's it's actually all God's gifts to us anyway. And that the Lord has purposes we cannot see. And that ultimately, if God has a talent uh, that God has given us, that that blessing will will go forth and do what God wants it to. Uh, And so so then last night, I got to go to dinner with uh, Pastor Emmanuel, who's uh, visiting from Tanzania, and he's going to be speaking uh, in the social hall after worship. And we were talking, and he was talking about the sort of the risk it has been to come here to the United States. Like, what would Jesus dare to do? Well, how about dare to leave your family, your wife, and your two kids behind to come to America? And it's been a joy to get to know him through Camp Kirkenwall. And then I know, um, yeah, he's, he has his own set of songs at Camp Kirkenwall. They're made famous by him, and the kids love him, and he's been a blessing to the killed children and youth in our church, and they've gone to camp. Um, But then I found out he was sharing that that at one point his wife was working at a school where they weren't getting paid. And in my mind, I thought of the distance, like, no, that can't be. Well, it turns out that, yes, Emmanuel's wife has worked there. So I got back on my phone, and I looked up on my phone, and I looked up two years ago the text message that I got from that teacher friend of mine in Tanzania, and there was Emmanuel's wife on that list from two years ago. Again, the Lord has purposes, and the Lord will ultimately use our gifts and talents in ways that we cannot see at the given time. And so when, it, when then it comes to this call to be bold and to take risks, we, we know, well, we know that at points that we're not going to get it right, that the risk we take, it's not going to pan out the way that we thought. But then there's a deeper good news, and that good news is that when it came to life, Jesus wasn't simply concerned with avoiding the wrong thing. If Jesus had been concerned with associating with the wrong people, then Jesus wouldn't have come to earth. But instead, Jesus came to earth, and he lived, and he ate, and he drank with people like you and me, people who make mistakes, who don't always get it right, people who bury their gifts, people who use their gifts only for themselves at points. What Jesus chose to do was, again, not be afraid, but he dared to give his life. Indeed, he dared to die on a cross for us, trusting that this risk would ultimately pay off, indeed, as he was raised up to new life. So that with this one holy, beautiful life we've been given and the the talents and the treasure and the time, it is a joy then to know that we're going to be able to be entrusted, that God took a risk on you, that God said, I'm going to give you gifts and skills and I'm going to see what you do with them, knowing, of course, that we're going to mess up from time to time. But God takes the risk and entrusts all of us with those gifts. And ultimately then, God is sovereign, and somehow we know that those gifts, even when we mess up, will somehow be put to use, for indeed, the one who forgives sins is also the one who makes life. Indeed, Jesus is the one who has forgiven us and is risen, and then meets us. And meets us on the way, certainly to give us our daily bread, to lead us not a temptation, but I dare to say, from time to time, to call us to take that risk and to share that which was given to us. Amen.